<clears throat> Good evening, lovely people. Welcome to another photography lockdown challenge. Fiddling about here, getting all my screen set up and everything ready. <clears throat> Just watching people arriving. How amazing. I've been looking at some of your comments. I think it's so funny the way everyone is so English and discusses the weather. <laughs> I once said to a guy in Turkey, what a lovely day. And he looked at me as though I was crazy. And he said, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Such an English thing to talk about weather. Good evening, everybody. It is so good to see you all again as usual. Clear my throat. <clears> throat> And let's get stuck into another photography lockdown challenge. If you've just found this video or this live stream, photography lockdown challenges are creative workouts for you to help you be more creative with your photography. We do a challenge on a Facebook group and then we come here every couple of weeks to do some feedback, have a chat, <clears throat> pick out a few winners and a few runners up. The idea of photography lockdown challenges is not to win though, it is to give your creativity a workout, to try and think a little bit differently. Because the most important and most powerful tool in all of photography is you and your brilliant brain. <clears throat> On behalf of everyone, I just want to welcome new members to the group, we invite you to join in the challenges. If you're someone who tends to watch others for whatever reason, then I'm especially talking to you. Please come and join in these challenges because that is where you get the most benefit. It's not necessarily about getting a shout out or winning or something like that. The purpose is to give your creativity a workout because photography is about you. It's all about thinking up a way to put a spin on a theme, a way to interpret it differently and not be obvious. We live in a very fast paced Instagram world where holding someone's attention isn't easy. You've got to stand out from the crowd because the chances are we've all seen it before in one form or another. If you'd like to find out about photography lockdown challenges, there is a link in the description area below. So my purpose, my why is to help people see more beauty in the world every day by thinking like a photographer. Well, what is beauty? To me, it's more than just pretty pictures. It's pictures that make us stop and think for a moment. Pictures that say something, tell a story, or challenge us to re-examine our preconceptions. Judging PLD is always tough. I want to help everyone, but that's not doable. It is a bit of a lottery as to whether you get a shout out or not. Some members are just beginning, just starting to take photography more seriously, beginning this exciting journey. Others are very, very good photographers indeed. Those guys put a lot of work into their ideas and the execution of them. They've evolved unique styles of their own. Now we've all seen images in the group and instantly known who the photographer is because, you know, you guys have been unafraid to show your feelings in your photography. And I'm speaking to you guys right now because for the next challenge, I want to see if you can surprise us See if you can give us something that isn't what we've come to recognize as being you, your style. See if we can pose something that we look at it in the next challenge and sort of go, oh, that's really nice. And then we go and look and see who it was and go, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> now, your work is awesome already because you are technically competent, confident enough to express what's inside you, your ideas. I'm not criticizing, I'm just giving you a very, very tough challenge indeed. So there we go, that's the preamble over. Um, <clears throat> just looking at the chat, make sure everything's all working well. So we've got a few people arriving. Hello, Janet Cooper. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We know I'm going to say that, don't we? <clears throat> I have an idea already, says Nick Humphrey. Rock and roll, Nick. Rock and roll. Now, <clears throat> my whole purpose is, as I said, to help people see more beauty in the world every day by thinking like a photographer. And then by sharing your images and stories with people that you know, you will help them see more beauty in it as well. And I think this was summed up for me perfectly.
Hello, hello. Is it back? It is back. I do apologise. <laughs> I cocked up. <clears throat> Sorry about that. What I was saying was I'm hoping that this guy, Giles Dooley, will come and give us a talk. He's one of the most inspiring people ever. He is the epitome of seeing more beauty in the world because he's often cited as being a war photographer. Yet Giles says he isn't. He says he photographs love stories in unexpected places. Um, and he's an incredible guy. He is out there in the field. He is shooting this stuff. Yet he blew both his legs and one arm off when he trod on a landmine. The inset black and white photograph is one such love story of Giles Dooley's. It's a woman called Halud who was hit by a sniper's bullet and ended up paralysed for the rest of her life. That's her and her husband. And he has been back and visited them many times. I think he's the epitome of seeing more beauty in the world. And I just think that is the way to go. <clears throat> so is the sound back? I just want to be completely sure. I think it is according to my sound level monitors here. Uh, just give us a yes. Quick yes, just so I know, because I saw there's a couple coming through. Thank you very much, guys. Hello, Crystal. Hello, Dawn, Julia, Cheryl, Alec. Whoa, big flurry of yeses. Thank you. I'm good at that sort of mess up, aren't I? So without further ado, let's get stuck into tonight's crop of photography lockdown challenges and just have a look at some of your images. Tonight I'm going to be doing more of a random thing rather than sort of calling out somewhere I think the photographer needs help. I'm, I'm just going to be kind of talking about all sorts of things because there's all sorts of amazing pictures going on here and I just thought we'd mix it up a little bit more then we'll do some runners up. <clears throat> and my favourite picture from the last challenge. If your picture isn't chosen, please don't take that as a slight on you or your photography. I just can't choose them all. I don't keep a record of who's been chosen and who hasn't. It really is a case of if I see a picture and I think, oh, that's quite interesting, I'd like to say something about that, then that's kind of what happens. So who have we got here? I can't see a thing. I think I brought the wrong glasses <laughs> with me. I'm gonna have to wait till it comes on this one. Ivana. <clears throat> So our challenge was isolate. I like your picture, Ivana, I do. I love the way you've got down low, you've photographed up along those amazing tree roads, tree roads, tree roots, and you're taking us on a bit of a journey through your picture, which is absolutely great. You've got lovely light going on, which is bringing up all those textures. I get it, it's a lonely forest, but I'm kind of missing the isolate feel. This is something I wanted to try and coach everyone on a little bit tonight, is try and think up that ways of interpreting the theme, which is why we always go for a theme rather than a photograph trees, photograph a forest, photograph boats, photograph water, because that makes it a little bit easier. It's a lovely shot. It's a great shot. <clears throat> what I'm missing is that feeling of isolate somehow. Similar thing going on here. Um, I think it's a lovely picture. I really do, Joseph. I think it's a beautiful picture. I love the way you've composed it, the way you've recognised that triangular shape and sort of pushed it into the corner. You took care over that. Beautifully lit. It's just an evocative, interesting picture. Yes, I get it. You've isolated something, <clears throat> but I'm not feeling isolation quite so much. I know that probably the challenge video I did, which unfortunately had to be done in a bit of a hurry, kind of gave the impression that that's sort of precisely what I was looking for. But always remember, think up different ways of interpreting themes. Um, one thing, I don't know, this is throwing this one open to the group in general. Um, <clears throat> I'm not so sure whether your border is helping, to be honest, Joseph. I don't know what you think, guys. I took the liberty of removing it. I personally find the border just a little bit distracting and it sort of takes away a little bit from that beautiful picture that you've done Joseph. I don't know what anyone else thinks, it's just interesting. Um, it can be very tempting to put borders on pictures. Um, generally I'm not so sure they help um, because it's a great shot. Be proud, be confident enough to let it stand on its own. I thought this was a very intriguing image here. Um, I just loved the light and the hand 
I think you did a great job there, Marcus. I just think it's a really interesting thing. It's intriguing. Yeah, you've isolated a body part sort of with, with light and with composition. And I love the way it's in black and white. I think it works. I like the position of your arm. I don't know if it's your arm, but it's just a really interesting shot. And really what I wanted to talk about with quite a lot of the things tonight in, in cases like this is why it works. It's the light. This, you know, there's a lot of care being taken here. We've got great directional light going on. Look how it's falling off around the arm. Marcus hasn't been afraid to let the shadow areas just go black. It's a strong image. It, it feels strong. And yet it is incredibly simple. How could you light something like this? Well, you could do it with the sunshine coming through a window. <clears throat> if you can have something black in the background. If you've got something that's a dark shade or black in the background that's in the shade and not in the same light as the arm, so that the light is, is darker behind, you can create this effect relatively low tech. Great shot, Marcus. I thought this was another. I just liked it. It has a slight feeling of loneliness. I'm sort of getting a little bit of the isolation. What I think is interesting with this picture is the angle. It's just a little bit different. We often see pictures like this. Nicely done, Pat. A um, little bit of a greeny color cast going on in the background. Maybe it's meant to be pale green. I'm not sure. My thoughts were it could do with just a little hint more exposure, perhaps. Just a little hint more contrast. See what you think. Here it comes. Let me just change that so it goes to a direct cut rather than a fade. Here we go. So here's your original, which is great. And here's the one which I took the liberty of just kind of pimping it up a little bit, giving it a little bit more contrast. But I do think it's a, it's a really cool picture. Crystal, I just saw your comment. Don't forget to like this video to help promote PLD. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, every little helps. Um, I'm going off on a tangent. I'm good at that, aren't I? Um, I'm having a conversation. I'm in having some conversations because, yeah, we've got to figure out some ways to keep PLD rocking and rolling because um, it can't continue quite the way it is. And I'm exploring some ideas with somebody who may be able to come and help, but I'm not going to say too much. Anyway, let's move on. Let's have a look at the next picture, which is a beautiful picture. It really is lovely. No shapes. Look at that light. Um, Shirley, Shirley Angel making. I think it's a really great picture. Oh, by the way, if you haven't been here and you think I'm looking away from you, I'm looking at another monitor over here because it's a bit bigger. I can see what's going on better. I think you've got some beautiful light. It's nicely done. You've got a great little sort of depth of field sandwich going on with a slightly soft foreground and a slightly soft background. I love the way you've composed it. So it's like a diagonal. We've got soft bottom right, bottom left, soft top right. And then we've got that beautiful little baby fern or bracken or whatever it is that is starting to grow. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very lovely shot. There are many in this category where I really have to add the appendage. I'm sorry it didn't go further up my points, but I just have to go with the ones which kind of speak to me. But I wanted to try and give a bit more of a shout out to you guys who are producing some really lovely pictures rather than just concentrating on trying to help everyone. So we've got a few more shout outs tonight. Here's another one, which I think is a lovely picture. Um, Steve Robinson. And I do kind of get the whole thing here, the, the feeling of being a bit isolated. You know, I don't know if this, it creates a story. I don't know if it does for you, but it creates a story for me, this picture. It's like, is this guy just in an empty cafe? I don't think so. I think this guy probably works there. Maybe is the owner in his empty restaurant cafe in that beautiful place. I wonder what that beautiful place is because look at that incredible view. Um, I think it is a really lovely picture and it tells that little story. The reason I think he's the owner is because there isn't a cup of coffee, there isn't any food on a table. I can't see anything that, that would persuade me to think that this person is a customer. Um, 
Hey Simon, restaurant owner without any gas. Cool, you told that story so well because, yeah, I got it. I got it. <clears throat> I think it's a great shot. I really like it. I'm just intrigued. Uh, Steve, is this someone that you know or is this just you happen to be somewhere? And I'd love to know where it is. I'd love to know where it is. It just it's beautiful. The light that's coming in from the outside, I think is great. And while, you, while I'm just waiting to, for you to reply. Um, hello, Kevin. Did you not get the reminder email? <clears throat> I don't think we did. I'm not sure if we do a reminder email now. I know I posted a link in the group and set up the wait room earlier, so maybe things have changed. Um, Janet thinks checking it out to book it for dinner. But I do think it is um, a great shot. I also know there's a bit of a delay, so Simon, if you don't... Sorry, Steve, if you don't get a chance to give us that answer, I'm going to move on a little bit. Sherry, I think you've got a nice kind of idea. I get it. We're in, we're in, you know, the goat pen here. Always a good place to be in a goat pen. I love it personally. <clears throat> and I'm not sure, but I think you're trying to keep everything straight because of the fence. But when you're on a wide angle lens, it's kind of bent things around a little bit and it's not quite sharp. Be careful with that sharpness. It looks to me like there's a little bit of camera shape shake going on in there. Something which works very, very well with animals is to photograph them from a different angle. Do you remember when I, at the beginning I said we kind of live in this fast moving Instagram world where holding someone's attention is a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, <clears throat> so a different point of view, a different angle, it can really help if you want to get people to stop, to pause, to look at your pictures for a minute or two. Um, trying to look at it in a different way. That is something which does make a big difference. Maybe a slightly lower angle, maybe on goat eye view, something like that. And I can also imagine, you may have been thinking, I don't want to get the wire in the shot. Could you have got the camera lens right up against the wire and sort of gone in through it? Maybe even use the wire just around the edges to make almost like a little wiry vignette going on in there. I thought this was interesting as well. I like the colours and I love the idea, Darren. Um, it looks like you're suffering from a little bit of camera shake here as well. <clears throat> camera shake are those little movements of our body. You have to be so careful to get the shutter speed fast enough to make sure that the camera doesn't wobble or move during the exposure. That often means pimping up the ISO. Even if you've got a camera on a tripod, if it's on carpet, it can often wobble. I used to do quite a lot of interior photography for some property developers and, and estate agents. And even using a Manfrotto Art 058, I think it is, which weighs a ton. It really is a real big, beefy tripod. Um, even with that on carpet, it didn't take much for the camera to vibrate. It's one of those things that we always have to look out for. But it's a nice idea. I'm not quite getting an isolate feeling. I know it's something isolated in an environment and there's some beautiful colors and, and I applaud your creativity here. I'm not quite getting that isolate feel. Remote release help, says George Baker. It does indeed, it does indeed. Also the self timer. If you've got a mirrorless camera, you can, you can use the self-timer. You can do it with a digital SLR as well, and many digital SLRs have a thing called a mirror lock-up because the vibration can happen when the mirror flaps up out the way when it takes exposure. Many cameras have a thing called a mirror lock-up. You can lock the mirror up out the way, use the self-timer, and then it just goes click, click, and it opens the shutter without causing any vibration. <clears throat> Image stabilization, that, that absolutely helps as well. So, David, I, I like your idea and I love this place. It's, it must be somewhere fairly famous because uh, Seven Sisters in Horton La Spring. That's a good name. And I get where you're going with your isolation, Phil. I'm getting your story of isolation here. Um, you know, that, the, the guy sort of lounging on the hilltop there. I don't know if that's someone you know or someone who was just there. 
It is interesting. It is interesting. <clears throat> I can't help wondering what it would have been like had that person been standing up. If it was someone you know, maybe if you'd yelled at them and told them to look in the other direction. Hello, Steve. You were up there the other day. Sorry, I was reading the wrong comment. I shouldn't try and read comments. I'm not very good at reading and I take so much concentration, I'll stop it. I'll just glance. <clears throat> How could this one be improved? I don't know. It's a tricky one. You've got some nice light coming through, but of course, there's a little bit of haze going on, a little bit of that mist in the distance. Can't help but wonder if you could have shortened the lens a bit or been a bit further away. I'm, I'm wondering if we saw the treetops as well with that little human figure in amongst them. Of course, the human figure is hard to really pick out because of the background. So difficult doing this stuff. But I love your idea. <clears throat> I do love your idea. And I get that feeling of isolation. I thought this from Shirley. I love that structure and the colours. <clears throat> Again, I'm not quite getting the isolation feeling. I, I get it, it's empty. I think possibly if you were to give just the structure more space in its environment so it's an isolated structure or had there been someone in there down at the end on their own then it would have been isolated beautiful beautiful light though <clears throat> beautiful light and colors i like the way it's just subtle you know it's not too bright it would be very tempting to maybe sort of push the exposure up a bit in this case or try and make it more contrasty but that absolutely works it looks like it's a very, very difficult thing to photograph too, because when you initially look at this, the structure appears to be sort of twisted over at a bit of an angle. Maybe that is part of it. But when you look at the horizon and the lines going down the side, surely you, you've absolutely taken so much care to get all that straight. And that tells us that it isn't. It's the structure. It's that sculpture. It's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> it's a beautiful thing. James, you've certainly found some isolation here, my friend. <laughs> no question about that. Um, you've definitely got some isolation going on. But I think it needs a little bit of help. <clears throat> Just a little bit of help. So, finger time. <clears throat> if we were to line up, just get your finger and just maybe take the bottom third of that image off because I don't think we need quite so much foreground where the structure is right smack in the middle of the frame. It's kind of lost, it's very camouflaged and the light's not helping much. But you could lose certainly a third of the bottom. And who said that? Janet said lose the sky. Hmm, hadn't thought of that idea. Let's go the other side and lose some sky. Janet, that is a really good idea. It certainly helps to lose some of the sky. I think it needs one or the other rather than both. <clears throat> the other thing is the light is not being your friend here. The light's quite high. It's coming from high in the sky above your left shoulder when you took that. Um, <clears throat> maybe had you gone to the other side of it and photographed it from the other side, maybe got a bit closer, a little lower down, um, and included a lot of sky, or a lot of foreground, one or the other. But I think with the light coming the other way, had you photographed this from the other side, that could have worked quite well. But then I don't know what is on this side of that bit of stonework. It may not be empty more. There could be a cafe or a car park. I don't know. <clears throat> I just said that, Simon. <laughs> I wonder what it'd be like with the sun behind it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being lippy and cheeky, aren't I? I love this, and I'm intrigued as well. <clears throat> Nick, I'm pretty sure you're here. I think I saw you saying hello to everyone in, in the chat just before I started. But it is a really, it's, it's great, you know. I, I, I love a manky old boat. It's absolutely splendid. I love your treatment of the colors and all that stuff. Um, it's just subtle, it's gentle, and it works with that sky. We haven't got strong light, and it's just to prove you don't necessarily need strong light. I think it is a really lovely picture. It could possibly, you know, I'm gonna say, because I'm a negative space junkie, aren't I? I think maybe 
it could have done with either, similar to the previous picture, constructive criticism would be maybe a bit more foreground and less sky, or more sky and less foreground. Also, I wouldn't say, don't be afraid to maybe give it some more space. space. This is a big, strong thing <coughs> sitting there. But I think it's a lovely shot, and I, I love your treatment of it. It's delicate, and it's really nice. Um, Nick, can I ask, where is it? It wouldn't happen to be somewhere near Gosport, would it? I'm not sure if I've seen this boat, if it is, because there is a place near Gosport where there are an awful lot of these old hulks. I'm just wondering if that's where it is. I keep meaning to go down there and do a, do a video, do a tutorial or something like that. Um, not sure, I'm just waiting to see if, if it is near Gosport. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'll move on to the next picture. You can have a look at that while I have a little scan of the comments. Oh, Medway Estuary. Thanks, Nick. It's great to know, isn't it? These, these things are so rare. Near Gosport, I can't remember what the name of it is, there is a lake and it is full of these sorts of old hulks. And I just wonder how long it will be before they're cleared up. And some of them must be a couple of hundred years old, I would have thought, if not more. Um, it's a fascinating place. It's in the middle of nowhere. All the best things are. I think you've got a great shot here as well. Bow. <clears throat> and from your name, I'm guessing you're in Vietnam or Vietnamese. You've isolated something really nicely, pretty much with light and nothing else. A bit like our arm shot. It's the light that is working in this. There's, there's, I don't know whether you lit this artificially purely from within but it doesn't matter either way because the light is sort of pushing through those petals against that dark background is great um, I think it's absolutely splendid I'm just looking at your comment ray of light hitting just one of the roses in my garden fantastic it's all about that thing about being aware of our environment looking around seeing what's going on noticing those times when there's just a little bit of light hitting something waking something up and bringing it to life. It's also, Bao, you've done, also done a great job here because <clears throat> camera seeing, it depends what metering mode you're using, but if you're in something like, say, evaluative metering mode where you're looking at the whole scene, with the background as dark as that, the camera will try and make it brighter because the camera thinks the whole world is what? Mid-gray, halfway between black and white. So when it sees a lot of darkness, it will try and brighten it up. Looks to me like you've been completely confident to argue with your light meter, to go, no camera, I want this to be a bit dark and moody. I want this little bit of light to stand out. Always remember, folks, your light meter is a good guide. It's a good starting point, but don't just blindly do what it says. Never be afraid to think, no, it's my picture. I want it a bit brighter or a bit darker because exposure is part of composition as well. How bright or dark your picture is, that's all part of your storytelling. It's all part of your portrayal of a scene. How bright do you want it? How dark do you want it? The camera will give you a great starting point, but it doesn't mean that the camera's right. What else have we got in here? I think this is a beautiful picture, Jeff. I think the light in there is beautiful. I, I, I applaud the trouble you've taken as well. <clears throat> getting everything all beautifully lined up when you took that shot. That is gorgeous light. Did I read one o'clock in the morning, uh, Grand Central Terminal? I think it's a great shot. And what we've got here is an empty building rather than isolation. I'm trying to give everyone a bit of coaching on the theme interpretation thing as well tonight. So we've got a great empty building but it's not so much isolation, so much as empty. This would be a wonderful shot. Absolute cracking shot, running with the theme, empty. Again, it needs a little something. Even if it's just like where, the, where that highlight is in the foreground. If there was just, I don't know, just a pair of feet poking out underneath that arch or a bit of a human shadow coming, or a dog shadow, or something going on to sort of say, isolated but it's a beautiful picture and I'm not trying to take anything away from it it's uh, well executed beautifully done George George says a busker yeah I, I absolutely mind you I expect the busters would buskers wouldn't really bother to be there 
at one o'clock in the morning, but uh, it is great. Christopher, I love your shadow and I love your light. It's pretty interesting. I'm just looking at the shape of the picture. I don't know if you cropped it like that, or maybe you did it on a phone, because I know some phones do these very long, narrow things. I don't care what you shot it on. That's just not important. But I do like the shadow, and I do like the colours. Looks to me like there's possibly a little bit of blur in there. It could be camera shake, so maybe it, you cropped it like this. Um, something which might be worth thinking about I don't know if it would have worked or whether the shadow would have gone soft because that hard edge shadow is really great. Would be maybe if you could move the glass and the flower far enough away that all you had was the shadow without the glass and flower. And then if you could have given it a little bit more space, if you kind of left some a bit of empty space around it, then I think we would probably have Chris Bonham. Hello, Chris. Must be you. <laughs> um, I think maybe it would have had more of an isolation feel, but I love it. I love the colours and I love the idea. And that shadow is just gorgeous. It's absolutely cracking. You cropped it. And, you know, of course, this is the great thing with photography. We all have our own interpretation, our own thing that we like. I am a negative space junkie. Fair cop. I'll put my hands out arrest me I am a negative space junkie but I think with the isolation theme it would have worked better with some more space maybe even you know including the glass because I like both it is a great picture as is this one Karen I'm going to check when it pops up on this screen yes I got it right I'm not quite as blind as I thought I get it We've got some isolate going on here with your daughter and I love the way you've kind of timed this so that she is just underneath the sun. When I look at these two monitors, uh, both my screens are calibrated, but when I'm looking at the, the one that's broadcasting out through YouTube, the colours are nothing like as nice as they are on, on my screen I've got in front of me here. Um, we've got some beautiful, rich colours and it's a bit more contrasty. Um, on this screen than, than it's showing in this live broadcast. But yeah, it's a great little moment. Isolation. I like the position of your granddaughter as well. I like, I like where she is in the frame, the way you use the space. Again, for an isolated feeling, I'd say, don't be afraid, back off that zoom, even give her a bit more space, a bit more up above, and then it would have a very lonely sort of feeling. But I love the way you've got her just in that light path so she really pops and stands out. It's a it's a cracking picture. Really nice, Karen. Ah, Mr. Cleesby. And I know you're here because I saw you saying hello to people just now. Good evening, sir. Also, it's like this one caught my eye as well because, again, you're kind of going for that moment when, when your duck goes through that light path. Um, and it just wakes the shot up, doesn't it? It kind of makes it noticeable. The thing we've got going on here though, Gary, again, I think it's possibly camera shake. I'm not sure the shutter speed was quite fast enough to, to hold it all together, to keep it nice and sharp. But again, great effort, you know? You, you, this is what you're so excited is watching people, you know, sort of watching their environments, waiting for the right moment for things to happen. I thought this was just a well-spotted shot here from um, Kevin. Because, yeah, you've isolated something technically, but you found something that is isolating itself because it's standing out. I just love these things that are just like, no, I'm going to be the bad railing. I'm not going to stand up straight. I'm going to slouch. <laughs> and it just made me smile when I saw it. And so, you know, this is a great case of just being aware of your environment, of what you're doing, whether you're just sort of walking around, doing stuff, and you think, oh, look, hey, that's quite amusing. That'll make a nice picture. Um, like a soldier leaning forward, says Simon. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just simple, and it works. 
I love this one, Dawn. I've forgotten all about these things. Love hearts. Were they fizzy? Or am I imagining it? I seem to recall they were sort of a fizzy sweet. <clears throat> they were quite nice. Never really ate sweets much. But I like your idea. I do like your idea a lot. It's it's great bit of creative thinking going on here, you know, isolated, just me. And using, you know, these little love heart sweets as well to do that. Um, I think it's a really great idea. My thought, I, what can I say? We've got a nice sort of shallowy sort of a depth of field going on. There's a bit of softness radiated. I'm wondering if you pulled a bit of a, of a soft vignette going on around it. But it doesn't matter. It works. And I think it works really well in that soft light too. It's a very pastel sort of a thing. Um, it's gentle. It's calm. It's that just me. Love the heart the soft little sort of delicately coloured pastels. I think it's really cool. Um, yeah, I really like it. I mean, it could probably work quite well with a little bit of gentle backlight as well, just coming towards the camera, but I like it as it is. I think it's a nice shot. Oh, this one puzzled me. This one puzzled me a lot. It's a great shot, but it did puzzle me, and I had to think about it quite a lot. Juliana. Because it's a really nice picture. I like the sky, I like the tones, the contrastiness, black and white just sort of works really well with this too. Why did it puzzle me? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Go on, ch ch chuck, a, chuck a something in the comments. Because when I first looked at it, I thought, ooh, there's something odd about that. And I had to look at it some more. Any ideas what that might have been? Or did anyone else feel the same thing? Just watching the comments to see. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have got it. It's not straight. But it is. And that is what made me go, oh, there's something odd going on here. Well, what is it? Something's frying my brain. The house is kind of like this. Initially, I thought, hmm, the camera's not straight. That's a shame. But look at the trees in the background. They're bending in at the same amount on either side, so it was straight. So it's something to do with a super wide angle straight, super wide angle straight, a super wide angle lens. That's my feeling. I don't know. I'm only saying what I think it is. But yes, the building indeed, Nan Kelly, looks like it's going downhill. But look at those trees in the background. Look, the trees on the left are, are folding in this way, and the trees on the right are folding in this way to the same amount. So therefore, it's not that the camera was on the wonk. It's a very, very wide angle lens and it's causing some sort of weird distortion thing in the middle. It's really, really rather interesting. And I think it's a great shot, um, Juliana. I do, I like it a lot and I think it works. And these are the things that, you know, these ones I'm kind of calling out and going, I really like it. I'm not necessarily critiquing or criticizing. I'm trying to highlight attention onto certain things around pictures. Um, for those of you that are kind of a little bit puzzled about these things. I hope it helps. I thought this was a lovely idea. <clears throat> I thought this was a lovely idea, Rob. Bob. Bob. Sorry, I should know by now, shouldn't I? Um, again, it's, it's very gentle. It's kind of delicate. The, the, just the two colours. Um, and I think it's a colour image. I don't think it's a spot colour. It might be. I don't know, but it works either way. Um, and it does have a feeling of isolation to it. Now, I know you have to sort of go down the words a bit carefully, do with my time, get lonely, <clears throat> which is kind of disappearing into the bottom bit, but without even reading the words, it still has a bit of an isolated feeling. There's something slightly sad about those three little petals on that sheet of music. And I can see you possibly brought in a little bit of grad either side just to sort of pull that attention in, but I just like it. It's, it works, it's simple. And you have managed to capture some sort of feeling of isolation through it. Sharon, you're right. Sharon Grigg just said dreamy. Yeah, that's the word. <clears throat> I couldn't find it. <laughs> it was a good idea. Sue, Owen. So many of our regulars here. Come on, you new guys, get stuck in. 
I think the idea is great. I think it is such a great idea. Um, you know, isolating the mains on the on the switchboard, on the fuse board. I just think it is such a good idea. <clears throat> Look at the work Sue's put into making that happen to get those little sparkly things going on in the background. I'm not quite sure what that is or how you've done it, whether it's something on a computer screen behind it, I don't know. Uh, whether you've got a sparkler going on, maybe it's a, you know, um, a flint, a lighter, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know. But I do think it's good fun. It doesn't quite work as a stunning image, but you have executed it very, very well indeed. Um, my question would be, and I've seen a couple of others saying, and why is it, oh, Glenn was asking, hello, Glenn, why is it red? I don't know, I'm guessing you put some red light onto there. I don't know. Um, oh, it's a little sparkler, hello, Sue, I'm glad you're here. I think it's such a great idea, I really do. And I think, and I applaud your creativity, you know, it's like, I'd never thought of that. You know, when we came up with the challenge, isolate. Isolate the mains at the fuse box. What a cool idea. Had never thought of it. Love it. I'm intrigued. What's the red? Did you put the red in there to give it more of that kind of, I don't know, electric red alert thing? Is there a color cast there? I'm just intrigued. It'd be so good if we were doing this, you know, in a great big room together because then we can sort of discuss and have back and forth instead of me droning on all the time. I'm just waiting just to see what Sue says, red alert, okay, I get it, Don, yeah. Maybe that's where you were going, Sue, red alert, isolate the mains, the sparklers, something's going wrong. But either way, the red brings a sort of feeling of danger to it. Red bulb, got it. Great idea, Sue, great idea. I like this one from Rob too, Rob Law. Because I don't know, do I get a feeling of isolation from it? I mean, there is that isolated rounded shape, the curviness of that light bracket thing on the wall, which is really nice against the regularity. But I think what the cool thing is, it's this again, a bit like our, our wonky railing, is, is seeing things, noticing things. That is the really cool thing. Being observant, noticing stuff. Yeah, exactly. Channel 4, I thought that as soon as I saw it as well, Glenn. Um, but it's that seeing things when we're walking around, being observant. I'll tell you a little story about that. Many years ago, my, min my ment mentor, I can't speak again. <clears throat> my mentor was a chap called Billy. He was a lovely, lovely guy and I worked for him unpaid for about a year whilst, you know, just carrying the bags, just wanted to be around the environment of a professional photographer, just to absorb and learn stuff. And Billy was just great. He was such good fun. And I think one day it was like, I was looking for a lens cap or something, and I just couldn't find this blasted lens cap. And eventually he just said, well, what's that? Pointed at something right in front of me, which I hadn't seen. And he just rubbed his chin and said, so what would you say is one of the most important aspects of being a photographer, apart from observation, of course? I've always been like that. <clears throat> Randy, I love your dog shot. <clears throat> beautiful light going on. Beautiful, beautiful light. I would again say, if you want to bring a feeling of isolation to it or loneliness or something like that, a little bit more space. You don't have to get in close to the subject. There is a, an internet myth um, about, you know, you need to fill the frame with the subject. Well, it depends what you want to do. What feeling do you want to give it? I, I don't hold with these things about you must, you must, rules. It's, it's nonsense. Um, but I love the light. And you've caught your dog's expression just at the right moment. The, the slightly front and back light is, is what's bringing out all those beautiful, beautiful textures in your dog's coat. Um, it's really lovely. Now, it, to me, it doesn't look quite sharp, whether that's a Facebook compression thing, so I know it does weird things to different resolution pictures, but it didn't look quite sharp, which uh, could be a bit of camera shake, because it didn't look like the focus is off anyway, it just looked like the whole thing's just a fraction soft. Keep an eye on that shutter speed, people, and never be afraid to give it a little bit more ISO if you need to help your shutter speed, because it'll, and you'll get a lovely sharp picture. But it's beautiful light. 
well-chosen moment. That's why it works. And I thought this was great fun too. Um, it's eye-catching, you know? It's just like, as soon as I saw it, it was like, oh, that's interesting, what is it? Um, that splash of red down there in the boat, again, I don't get the feeling that's a spot color. It might be, it doesn't matter, it works. Um, I know I'm famous for not being a big fan of spot colors. Um, I'm not a fan of obvious spot colors, but when spot color occurs and it kind of looks natural, I, I really like it. Um, super, super wide angle lens. And because of that big empty lake, I do get a little bit feeling of isolation. It's not that I'm looking at isolation. It's like the person who is looking at that scene is feeling isolated. Does that make sense? It's a subtle distinction, but to me, it just feels isolated. It's like I'm standing on that dock looking at that boat early in the morning um, and just feeling a bit isolated in the middle of nowhere. I think it's great. Um, I think it's a really cracking shot. Talk about beautiful light, there's a glorious sunrise happening here this morning. I'm distracted, James Barn. Jane Barn, stop looking out the window this minute. Good on you, Jane. Up at five o'clock in the morning again, and I did see earlier on you said something about you've got a presentation to do after this. Thank you so much. Hey, Dawn. Hey, Dan. 10 millimeter fisheye lens, yeah. And it works. Nice shot, nice shot. It's eye-catching. Again, it's like we were saying earlier on about the fast-moving in, um, Instagram world of next, 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 next. People don't pause, they don't look at things. Unless something is different, they don't pause, they don't ponder. Actually, I'm going to say something about pausing in a minute because there's a bit of news I want to give something I want to give you guys. Um, lovely picture, Dan. I love this. I love a bit of weather. <clears throat> um, Dave Hansen, what a wonderful bit of weather going on there. Um, it's just awesome. The other day, when was it? Sunday night down here in the south of England, there was a lot of storm clouds and stuff going on all around our area. And uh, a friend of mine, Keith, he's, he's just got an old Royal Enfield motorbike. And he's like, come on, let's go for a ride. So I jumped on motorbikes together and off we went for a ride. We went, well, what, what I call uh, cloud dodging. There's no destination involved. It's just like ride the motorbikes. And, you know, it's like, oh, it's clouds over there. Whoa, we're going this way. Sunny over there, we're going that way. Back roads only, no main roads but we did happen to be on the main road past Stonehenge and there was something like this going on in the background and the sun was coming in low. It was late, late afternoon, just as it was, just before it was getting dark. And I must admit, I looked at it and thought, that would make such a stunning picture. And you reminded me of it the moment I saw it. Um, it's a great picture. Again, well noticed and, and well shot. It's one of those things that we have to see. And I think those little buildings at the bottom, I get it. There's a little isolated town. Now it doesn't look like a really tiny town or a really tiny place at all, but it's like compared to what's going on in the sky up above us and out there in the world, anything us human beings do is minuscule, isn't it? And I think you've captured a feeling of that in here. Um, I think it's a great shot. I do, I do like it. I like it a lot. And I thought here was a really cool idea. Um, Monica, I just thought it was such a good idea. Feelings of being isolated, no internet connection. <laughs> Again, it never even occurred to me any more than, you know, isolating the mains power box. It's a good idea. I think it's pretty cool. I, I, you fulfilled a brief very well. <clears throat> As a standalone image, does it stand out? Is it... Well, no, probably not, but you put a lot of work into it and I applaud your creative thinking to think up a new and different way of doing it. I also kind of like your background, that pizza box. So you've got a slightly, you know, manky and used pizza box that you've got your phone leaning against. And, and to me, those two things kind of work together because they've got the shiny modern and a <clears throat> originally I thought it was an old antique something. And then I got really, really close and I realized, no, it's not a takeaway pizza box. <laughs> but it does convey it. And within context, yes, that absolutely works. Isolated. These days we rely on the internet so much. 
Um, I thought this was another lovely picture as well. Beautiful light as well, Kimberly. What did you say? Favorite pastime is roaming in, gray, in, roaming in cemeteries. <laughs> uh, good. They are interesting places. I'm not going to take that away from you. And you've got some beautiful light on that stone, um, on that grave. The sun was behind the clouds when I was walking towards it. Go closer, the sun peeped out. Yeah, you've got to move fast sometimes. And you've spotted a great shot. You've executed it technically beautifully. The way the backlight is, is coming around those wings is what is making its work. It's backlight. Again, shooting against the light works very, very well, particularly if the sun is coming in over something that's fairly dark and your subject's background is dark. And then that beautiful rim light. Look at that little halo of light going on all the way around the angel. Um, well spotted, beautiful little piece of light. When it comes to the isolation aspect, the feeling of isolation. Okay, a graveyard or a cemetery is an isolating experience to be in. Um, again, I would sort of say, how about if you turn the camera the other way up and gave it a bit of space above? I don't know. It might be the tops of the trees. You've had a horrible white line up there. I don't know. It's just a thought. But I totally applaud you for noticing the light. This is something human beings, we don't do naturally. We don't see light. We can see the light source and we can see what the light's landing on, but light is invisible. And recognizing qualities of light, that is what we've got going on here, is the light qualities that make this work. Had the sun not been shining on it, it just wouldn't. It just wouldn't work at all. Photography has so little to do with cameras. That's what I find completely fascinating. I think this is good fun. Um, Raju. How did you get your guinea pig to pose like that? That is just such a cool guinea pig, isn't it? Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> it's a disco guinea. I just think it's great fun. I love the way you've shot this with a wider angle lens and got sort of closer, you know? I'm pretty sure you shot this with a fairly short lens because like, look at that nose. It's like, it's getting stuck in there, isn't it? Um, I, I just like it. I, again, it's, it's a lovely picture. Am I feeling it's fulfilling that isolation brief? No, not particularly. Um, you've got some great colours going on here. It's a great moment. It's a great expression. It's a good, fun picture. Um, it really is. The only thing I'm not sure, I mean, this could be intentional. Initially, my, my immediate thought is, I don't know, would it be better if the eyes were sharp, if there was a touch more depth of field so you could have that brilliant nose and the eyes sharp? Just a bit more. We don't want the background sharp. Absolutely not. This could be where that little subtle um, changes in aperture, just going from sort of, you know, like the widest, I don't know, F4, F2.8, whatever it may be, and just sort of decreasing it a little bit. How would you do that when you're trying to catch a guinea pig dancing? difficult the thing anything you can do is try and do a few test shots you know as you're sort of taking pictures of your guinea pig just look at things just check things and think mm, a little bit more depth of field might just help here the other thing which might just help if you could do it i don't know how spontaneous this was is that white thing in the corner it is rather distracting um but either way it's good fun it is good fun here's a beautiful picture uh, Barry Raspberry. I mean, <laughs> what a beautiful picture. I'm sorry it's here and it's not further up my list. There were just others which captured me more. That's all I can say. There is nothing wrong with this at all. It's just a beautiful picture um, of a, I don't know what it is. Did you write it in there? I'm not good with, with flappy things, birds and stuff. Um, I like them, but I never know what they're called from birds I mean it's a beautifully done shot what more can I say a long lens and a shallow depth of field you've isolated that little bird perfectly you've captured just a great little moment with its head on one side again if you look carefully at that light it's very very soft diffuse light most of the, there's a little bit more light coming behind than there is in front if you look very very closely 
at those leaves and flowers, you see there's a little tiny bit of rim light going on. There's a little bit of rim light going on around the bird. Look at the tail feathers. See that little halo of light? It's a very, very subtle thing. These are things to watch out for. Perfect, beautiful light. It's not bang, it's not being whacked hard with sunshine, but the light is coming from that direction. Um, yeah, it's a lovely shot. It's a lovely shot. Do I get isolation from it? No, especially what I get is, wow, that's a beautiful wildlife shot. Wish it was one of mine. Ah, our friend Paul Trivley. Hello, Paul. I love your triangles. I don't know if you're with us tonight, but I kind of like it. It's, it's a nice little moment. And again, it's, it's, this is where light comes in so much, different types of light. Um, hey, Paul. Good to see you, mate. Um, different types of light. You know, we, we have got light sort of coming in from the side and it's lighting up and it works well on this. And I, and I do get an isolated feeling in here. You know, this guy just looks fed up. Um, I'm guessing it's someone you just saw and photographed. I don't know. Just having spent a bit of time with you, I know what you're like. You're not a shy person by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I like it. And, and the way it's framed, you know, had Paul been a little bit further or a little bit further back and those, those triangular shapes weren't sort of framing up our subject. Look at the different tones. Look at the lightness of the shirt. Look at the light on the fingers. Um, Random McDonald's worker. Okay, cool. This well spotted, and it, yeah, it has. It has got that feeling of isolation. He just looks really, really fed up. Might just be really tired, don't know. Nicely done, nicely done. Ah, oh, this one made me smile. Kirsten. It just made me smile. It's just a really interesting idea for a photograph. It's a different point of view. And somehow, it has an isolated feeling to it. To me, it just feels isolated, that, that lonely football. It's like somehow the kids have stopped playing with the football and the football's feeling lonely. How can you feel sorry and for a football? But I just think it's such a great shot. I love the reflection. And again, it's like I'm looking at my YouTube feed on that monitor there, and it's just nothing compared to the one on here. Um, it's lost all its shimmer and shine because that shiny floor, that reflection. Good on you, Kirsten, for thinking up a different way to look at something, you know, getting down low, getting on the floor, finding a new way of looking at something. And you really did get a feeling of isolation, a lonely football. How cool is that? That takes some doing. Jamie Smith. Lovely, lovely, lovely black and white high key image. It takes a lot of courage to do things like this, but they work. They work so well. Lonely, isolated bird. Did you do that? I don't know if you're here, Jamie. Is that, is that purely an exposure thing? There was tons of light bouncing off some water and you just sort of lifted that exposure up until it just sort of blew away because I love those sorts of things. Um, but it is a really, really beautiful shot. Now we're using a really, really classical sort of rule of thirds composition in this case. Now don't get hung up on that. It's just that I think it does work here. I really do. Um, there's no such thing as a rule. It's really noticeable because there's nothing else going on on the space. Great use of empty space. Um, I think it's really, really good fun. And the good thing with this sort of thing, if, if you have got really, really bright backlight coming up off water, you can completely blow it away and it has a great effect. You don't need to see all the water, you just need those few ripples. And I don't know if you did this in post or whether you just did it because the light would let you do it, I don't care. It just looks really, really cool. But you could position that bird almost anywhere in the canvas and, and, and it works. I just really like it, I think it's great. But the thing to watch out for, sorry, what I was trying to say was, the thing to watch out for is light coming in off the water. I should have had the forethought to think. I did a portrait of a family. They wanted some sort of laid back pictures. We went down to the sea. It was a lovely summer's day and they were splashing around in the water and, and the sun was in front. There was so much light bouncing off the water 
just thought, well, there's no point. I can't put the C in there because we won't be able to see them. They'll be silhouettes. So just like let the highlights go. And it was a very similar thing to this. I wish I dug it out because it's another way you can use this. The key is looking and understanding and seeing and going, wow, look at that really bright light. The first place you could go would be panic. Oh no, they're going to turn into a silhouette because, you know, it's the time of day. It's when you're there. That is what's happening. But you could also use that to create an effect like this, just as Jamie's done. Great shot, Jamie. Great shot. This interested me as well. Petro. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think this, this picture had the most likes. And again, when I look at this on the YouTube broadcast compared to here, it, it's lost a lot of life over there. It is interesting. And I do get that feeling of isolation. You've got some lovely light going on. It's just coming from in front again. It's almost like this has almost become the backlight tutorial, hasn't it? Um, but the light is coming from slightly in front and it's wrapping around and it's making those textures in the sand and in, I guess it's a shell. I'm not quite sure what it is, um, or a bit of coral. Um, the way it's just sort of wrapping around. Benno Sarajic! How are you doing, my friend? Anybody remember Benno? He was one of our first guest judges. So we've got the world-renowned Benno Sarajic, landscape and architectural photographer who's just leapt in on chat. Hello, Benno. I need to talk to you, don't I? Because everybody said they wanted you to come back and give us a talk sometime. And Benno, by the way, has already said he would. Benno was feeding me some sort of ginger drink when we were at Exposure together recently. He said, here, try this. It's like sort of rocket fuel. And he's not wrong because there's no alcohol there. And it's like it was ginger and, and something. It was just so powerful. I love that stuff, Benno. When I come back, I'm going to get a supply. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for popping on. Benno walked into one of my classes too. And he didn't heckle, unlike a certain well-known photojournalist called Estra Suarez, who did. <laughs> right, let's get back to this. You've got some really nice light going on, and it's subtle. But it's, again, notice the light. See how the light is just kind of wrapping around things? You've been careful, used a shallow depth of field, and it is, it's a very peaceful little thing. And you have isolated something within it. It is, yeah, nice work. But notice this light. We're talking about light a lot, it seems, this evening. Haley Elizabeth. Now, Haley, this is your thing. You know, you do the most beautiful shots of this type. You're very, very good at this. We all know that. You are one of those people I was talking about earlier, really. It's like, you know, there's you and, and quite a few others, you know. You've got a very, very strong, very, very strong style, and you're very, very good at what you do. Look at these subtle colours again. Look at that beautiful use of light. Um... And again, this shot looks dead in YouTube compared to the way it looks in my screen. And yeah, you have isolated. You, you have got a little feeling of isolated leaves. I'm going to be hard on you, Haley, because you are so good at this sort of thing. But that's what you always do. This is what I mean. It's like it's your style and you are so good at it. That's why I thought we ought to come up with a little challenge for some of the others. But it's a beautifully executed shot as we would expect. Um, and it's soft and it's pastely. Look at, look at the simplicity of the colours. If anyone's thinking, why does that work? It's because it's simple. It's because we know what the picture's about. We're looking at it. How many colours are in that? It's really just sort of shades of the same colour, isn't it? Um, it's a lovely shot. So, yeah, Hayley, you're one of the guys I, I was talking about earlier. There are, of course, others. <laughs> Great shot, Haley. as always. Here's a beautiful picture as well. Very much on the same sort of theme. And again, I'm kind of like, think it's really great, Neil. The way you've kind of let the background blow out. I don't know if you put a white background in there, but it's kind of nice the way you've let that exposure just sort of stay up a little bit and just let those white little tips of the petals sort of fade off into the background. It's... Um, it's a very pleasing, comfortable, easy thing to look at. Again, I'm going to come back to our theme, isolate. To me, it doesn't have a feeling of isolation or isolatedness. 
particularly not as there are two sort of flower heads going on in there. I'm not saying it's a bad photograph, it isn't. It's a beautiful picture. It's a really calm, pleasant picture to look at. It might have worked more with an isolation thing had it had a whole pile more, pile more, I can't speak, pile more space going on around the flower heads. Um, this is one banging on about thinking of interpreting the theme. Not necessarily liter literally, because of course you could do all sorts of things to do it literally but they might not be very interesting to look at. That's why these challenges are a workout for your creative juices, for your thinking. Beautifully done shot. Very nicely executed. And here's a great idea. I think this is a great idea, Lisa. <clears throat> you know, you took a whole different spin. You thought completely differently around this. Um, I so late. <laughs> I get it, I get it, I get it. And, and I love the way you, I'm guessing this is a selfie. I don't know if you're here, Lisa. I'm guessing it might be a selfie. And it's a great idea. As a photograph, it kind of works. It's, it's better on my screen, but it somehow needed a little bit of a lift. I'm not sure, a little bit of, sort of, bit more light. I can see there is a soft shadow. You have got gentle side light. Possibly just a little hint more um, contrast in there but it's a great idea and I'm not knocking it from you there I totally salute you for putting a whole new world of spin onto isolate well done it's cracking here's another beautiful picture crystal crystal craig and again it's we've got a similar thing going on haven't we with that you know when you've got light coming towards you on water you can let it sort of blow away a bit. Don't be afraid to do that because you can get this sort of beautiful, beautiful looking effect. Having light coming towards you brings up these textures and, and shapes. See how the light is wrapping around this, this woman's body. Look at the, the float in front of her. See how it's getting its shape because there's that highlight on the top and the light is just folding around it into the shade side, which is giving it that texture. Lovely little ripples. There are many people out there in the world that will say burning out a highlight is bad, wicked and wrong. You should go to jail for an undisclosed period of time. It's all contextual. Sometimes the odd sparkle or blown out highlight, it just works. If you take a photograph and include the sun in it, it's pretty much going to burn out because that's what the sun does. If you look at, well, I mean, I've got a, a light in front of me here, you know, to make me look beautiful while I'm talking to you. But, you know, if I squint at that light, the bulbs themselves, yeah, they're burnt out. Some things do burn out. Don't be taken in by internet myths. It's a beautifully taken shot. And I am getting that feeling of isolation. All I'm going to say, Crystal, is maybe a little bit more room. And, and it would have been a really isolated thing. Human forms, don't be afraid to let them be small in a frame because we're pre-programmed through evolution to recognize other human beings, probably because in the old days we were afraid they were going to steal our sheep or cattle or vegetables or crops or something like that. Um, but we do notice them. That's why we see faces in clouds. Say, so, oh no, there's a face in the cloud or you know, we see, see someone in a piece of toast or something like that. We are programmed to look for patterns of human shapes and never be afraid if you want to give a lot of space around a human being because we will see it and it will bang, grab us. Beautiful shot, Crystal. Really nicely done. And I love your use of black and white. Kay Gill, are you here, Kay? Did you get up really silly early in the morning down there in New Zealand? Kay's been around my training for a long time, known Kay long before PLD on things. Um, I just think this is a great little moment absolutely great little moment they're not easy to capture moments like this they're really not just you know like that little head looking up and curiously peering back at k and to capture it now i don't know my thoughts are you probably need to sit around for a while and think oh i hope it does it again and you may or may not get it that's where the patience part comes in but again look at that light photography light light is everything Using light appropriately, funny ways to portray light, it's all part of it. Look at the little white rim light, we've talked about these a lot tonight. Look at the light around the edge of the seal, light. It's that little bit of rim light which is isolating that seal from the background. And I would say it's doing it far more than the shallow depth of field. 
it's the light which is really, really doing that. Um, yeah, great shot. Is it a real emotional feeling of isolation? No, but you have isolated the subject and it's a great moment captured. Great use of light and being observant. I thought this was a lovely picture. And I hope it doesn't trigger off that joke again. But anyway, I think it's a lovely picture. I love the softness. There's kind of like a misty lens flare thing going on. Now there could be sort of lots of humidity in the air and a long lens will magnify that humidity. But I love the pastel nature of it, the shallow depth of field. Again, look, we got backlight. Look at the light just touching on the edge of some of those feathers. It's, it's really nice. There's just little, little hints of it, that mistiness. Things don't have to be contrasty and sharp and strong and, and heavy. They can be anything because this is all part of how you compose your picture, what you choose to do with it. Do you want it to be a misty morning? Like, you know, a hazy dream you just got up in the morning. That's what we've got going on here. Um, thanks, Jules. <laughs> you see, I told you I wasn't very good at birds, didn't I? <laughs> um, but it is, it's that hazy, misty morning thing. And also, good on you, Mark, for, you know, you're down on the ground. We're at, we're at goose eye view. It's a goose. We're at goose eye view. John, you don't want to know what that joke was. It was just, I, it was funny at the time, but I apologise, it, it just went on a little too long. I love your goose, Mark. Great job, great job. Yeah, again, technically, you have done a good job of isolating a subject. Does it have a feeling of isolation? Kind of, because of this misty sort of murkiness. Again, I would say, don't be afraid to give a little bit more space. You know, where is our duck? What is our duck? wondering about. I think it would enhance it maybe with a touch more space. But it's still a great shot. Another beautiful shot here from Linda Windsor. I think it's a beautiful shot. I'm not getting isolated from it really. I, I know where you're going. You're going, I've isolated the flower head in the mirror. I get it. I think it's a quirky picture and I think it's a fun picture. I think it's the sort of thing I could see, you know, for sale as a poster in an art shot, that sort of thing. Very simple colours, really nice light. It's fun. It's kind of like the flower in the little jar and the mirror are having a conversation somehow. That's, that's kind of what I get. I don't know, what do you get? But it's very simple colors, lots of grays, and those two splashes of blue with that little bit of yellow in the middle. All those colors are best friends. They all hold hands and dance and love each other. Um, it's a great shot, Linda, you're welcome. I just think it's a really good picture. It's a really happy picture. There's something happy, isn't there? It's just the way the mirror, somehow I get, do you get this or am I making stuff up? I make stuff up all the time. But I get the impression that the mirror is kind of looking at the flower in a slightly benevolent, tongue-in-cheek sort of a way. Maybe it's just me. <clears throat> Maybe it's just me. Uh, what else have we got going on here? Here's a stunning picture, which... Uh, from Paul Tysack. Paul, you know, we kind of kind of know your pictures too. You're another one. Um, beautiful shot, beautiful shot. I'm intrigued, Paul, are you here? Did you use a camera trap or something? Because that looks like it's lit with flash. What an amazing moment. What a powerful thing. You've isolated a moment in time very, very well. Um, I don't know, am I, am I feeling isolated or, or something? No, you've isolated a great moment in time and that's probably another really good twist on this whole idea. Um, I'm just looking in the comments just in case you're here, Paul, because I'd just love to know. Because, you know, getting that just right, that's, that, that light is off camera. There's light coming in from the left. It's going over those pebbles or beans or whatever they may be that that, that crow is coming in for. <clears throat> I shouldn't have said that, should I? I told you I'm not good with birds. It might not be a crow, I'll get told off again. <clears throat> but it's a well-captured moment, technically beautifully executed. Um, Jane Barnes just said, uh, apparently he said in the group somewhere that it's taken the best part of a week to capture this. I totally get it. I totally get it. You can see that. There's work goes into these things. I don't know if um, 
Benno is still here. He's famous for disagreeing with me. Um, I find most photographers are usually very happy in their own company. If you're here, Benno, would you agree with that? Um, I find many of the best photographers are often people who are very comfortable in their own company. They spend a lot of time on their own, <clears throat> working on things, planning ideas, doing stuff. Um, it really came to light to me, it came home to me flying back from the Emirates after teaching at Exposure. There was, what, six of us all flying back to the UK and we're all photographers. And the thing that was interesting is we were all on the same flight, but so obviously not travelling together. There was no sort of meet up, uh, you know, under the Costa at Heathrow to say goodbye in a group hug or anything. It's like in between changing flights, it was like every every man or woman for themselves, you know. We were all going off scattered like cats. And you talk, oh, no, Charles Dooley, the man I was talking about, he was on that flight. Hey, Charles, what are you doing? I'm having a coffee. I'm not going in there yet. I'll wait. <clears throat> so Joel, you know, and that's kind of how it went. A lot of photographers are quite happy to do a lot of time on their own, putting in a lot of work. So yeah, I don't doubt it would take a week to get that shot. Really cool. Looks like Benno's gone. Either that or he's not talking to me. So these are the ones that I really agonized over. As usual, the, these are the ones which just spoke to me. Others may well have spoken to you and that is fine. That is completely fine. <clears throat> That is allowed, because we all like different things, don't we, at the end of the day? So let's have a little look at the ones that I really kind of went, ooh, when I saw them. I really like that, Ian. Again, you know what I said about little tiny human forms? We're, we're pre-programmed to notice a little human figure in the distance. And I just like it. To me, that really does say isolate. It's an isolation. Nothing is isolated technically in the frame like I did in that example, just messing around with some flowers. But it really does have a feeling of isolation. I think it's a really, really nicely done shot. I love the fact the sun is just going below the horizon or possibly just coming up above it. I'm not sure which. Here we go. Benno, you are still here, my friend. Best ideas crystallize when you remove the noise which pollutes your senses. Isolation fertilizes creativity. Benno just posted that comment. Yeah, I think you'll find if you speak to many photographers, professional photographers, certainly the best photographers, you'll find they spend a lot of time on their own. It's not something which people tend to do as a group. I know that I can't do photography when I'm in a, you know, when you're pressured, when you're in a rush, we're in a hurry. Um, well, I'll talk to Benno, I'll have a chat with you because you've already said you'd be more than happy to talk to the group. I apologise, I haven't been in touch with you yet. Um, you know, you look, those of you who haven't seen any of Benno's work, it is, it is absolutely, you know, the best. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. But I know he'll also tell you a bit about how much work he puts into doing them, how much work he goes into getting them. I'll be in touch, Ben. I'll give you a shout sometime during the week. I hope you're well, mate. We can't have a private conversation here, <laughs> idiot brown. I love this one. I thought it was creepy and really interesting. I can't explain why I found it so interesting. Again, the YouTube version doesn't look as good as the one on my screen. It looks fractionally soft, but okay, so what? Um, but I like the light. We've got hard light and that kind of makes it even creepier. And I get that feeling of of like being isolated, maybe locked down, all that kind of stuff and peeping out of the window. And the fact that it's a plastic head just is what to me makes it. I, I really like it, Gary. I think it's, Jerry, sorry. I think it's great fun. I really do think it's great fun. Also the shape with the curtain. I don't know if you set this up, whether it's something you saw when you walked past. I don't know if you're here, um, <clears throat> Jerry, but it just, I just thought it was such good fun. And it did feel isolation. I felt a kind of isolation going on there. I thought it was great. Very isolation going on here. Another bird. We've got this bird night tonight in the photo lockdown feedback. And I think you're really brave, James. You know, the way you've positioned it, putting that little line right through the middle, which many people wouldn't do. 
but I think it works. I think it works really well um, because it's eye-catching. I love that little tiny bird. You've been very brave in your use of space in, in letting it be lonely, letting it be isolated, this little bird out there in the world. But again, it's your use of the space in just letting that black line go right across the middle. That is, to me, what makes it noteworthy because it'd be very easy, particularly at the beginning of a photographic journey, to try and impose some sort of a rule onto the picture. Um, I think it's really nicely done. I think it's a lovely picture. I thought this I kind of like, but that's this is just, again, me. I kind of like storytelling, street-type photography. Andre. I don't know how I say your name. I wish I knew. Andre. Andre. I think it's going to be an Andre. And I think it's that juxtaposition, that, that kind of relationship between shop smart and stay safe and this guy living on the streets. I also love his expression. He's got such a friendly, open expression. And, and I kind of like that. Would it work? But I, I do like to see engagement with the camera. It'd been lovely if he'd been, had that expression straight into the lens. Um, but he didn't. I still like the picture. I like the way you've captured stuff around the environment. To me, it tells a little bit of a story. You know, I like the fire exit, the peely things, the, the marks on the wall behind him. Um, but particularly that shop smart, stay safe. It, to me, tells a little story. Did I see? Yeah, I did in Southampton High Street. I'm just looking to see if you're here, Andre. Don't think you are. I met a homeless guy on Southampton High Street when I used to work in television. We were filming a TV program and there's always tons of hanging around involved when you're filming stuff. We were waiting for stuff to happen. There was a guy selling these big issue magazines and uh, he, he kind of had an expression like this guy. He was very he was very friendly and he was like, good morning, everyone. Can I interest you in a big issue magazine? And how are you today, sir? And all these people walking past him, ignoring him like he was invisible. And I went over and said, so what are you doing here? You know, because there's a spark about you. Um, you know, and he told me his story that he'd had an, he'd been an architect. He had a practice of his own. He had employees to have, uh, one of his children was killed, uh, died. And uh, it caused tremendous strain. He started drinking a bit, but he said they just started to come out of that. His wife and remaining child was killed as well in a car accident. And he said he just started drinking because he couldn't handle the pain. Lost his business, lost his home. He just disappeared into a bottle. And uh, he also was a man who could obviously, with his contacts, he was really bright. He was on the ball. He said, I don't drink anymore. I don't touch any of that stuff. But he, I asked him, why, why have you not just gone back to old contacts, gone back into the world of architecture and professional staff? And he just said, uh, I want to do this journey. I want to know what it's like. I don't want to be an architect anymore. I want to follow this journey and see where it leads. And I thought that was a really brave, adventurous thing to do. Very often homeless people have got stories to tell. And I think you've caught a bit of a story here, Andre. I like it. I like this one too. I think there's a little story in here. I think it's quite a powerful one. There's very much a feeling of isolation going on here, George. Um, I love her expression. I like the way you kind of put this together very carefully. The way the bars are nice and straight, you know, little things like that make a big, big difference. If, if things are sort of glancing off out of the corners of pictures, um, they they kind of don't quite work. They become distracting. But in this case, they don't. They totally enhance it. Um, We've no idea what her facial expression is really because of the mask. We can only read her eyes and her face. And that to me is kind of what works. It's like we can't see her face. We can't see whether she's smiling or not, but we can see her eyes and the bars. And it's got a really strong feeling of isolate, isolation. Great way of portraying this. And again, we seem to have been talking about it a lot tonight. Look at that light. Where is it coming from? behind the subject. And again, what's going on in the background? Something a little bit darker than the subject. See how the light's catching her hair? Every strand of hair is standing out. Look how the light is wrapping around her shoulders. The light is giving her a hug from behind. It's wrapping around her shoulders. These are things to look out for. These are things to look out for. Um, I think it's a lovely picture. 
I really do. I like it a lot. I like this one a lot too. Again, another little tiny human figure. There's a lot of isolation going on here, Rupert. Um, I think it's a really nice picture. I think it's a great shot. And I think I saw, I was looking in the thing, you said you, you've been here many times hoping to get a walker and you couldn't. And you know, I know that's the frustration, isn't it? Again, it's why you have to go and do things on your own. You drive your family mad. If you go, oh, you want to walk up to that bloody tree again? You're going to make us sit there too, aren't you? You're going to try and make us walk up and down the path. And it doesn't work because you can't be open to, to, to ideas and the creative spirit when you do that. I kind of like the fact that the light is very flat. There's that bright patch on, on, on the ground there. And the way that little dark figure on that path, the way the path wanders through there. I think it's a really great picture. I really, really like that. Nice one. Oh my word. We've got so many cool pictures tonight. Carl. I was just, I don't know what to say really. It's, it's, a, it's a really, cracking stunning picture i love the way that light is all coming in from the corner now i don't know whether you're a whiz and have got some post-production going on here whether you've got some lens flare what the atmospheric conditions were I don't really care it's just a very very powerful picture again look at the light it's backlit again and um, we're talking about light a lot it's slightly behind and coming towards Look at the shapes around the wing. Look at the shape under the bird's body. It's bird night tonight. I just think it is a really powerful, beautifully done picture. I like the way you've used the space too. I like that kind of very, very long cinema cinematic sort of crop to it as well. Um, yeah, get you, Steva. It's a great album cover. It totally is. It does get better the longer you look at it. I agree, Moose, yeah. It's, it's, I don't know what to say really. It's just a beautifully done picture. What more can I say? I'd love to know more about how it was taken, where it was taken. You know, I quite like that blue tint to it, that, um, what do they call it in movies? Teal, I think they call it. I think it's a really interesting look. Beautifully done picture. I love this one too. Again, I'm going to that stuff that I kind of like. Because like initially you just think oh, it's some protester, but if you just linger, you know, don't be in a hurry. You just look at the picture for a moment. You suddenly realise that it's a different thing. And I think Max, you've got a great spin on again that isolation. How isolated must this man feel, justifiably or not? I don't know. He obviously feels incredibly isolated. You know, he's saying he's had all his money taken and his family removed and he's wrongfully imprisoned and goodness knows what. I love the way you've, you've used, in this case, a slightly longer lens and a shallow depth of field to enhance that feeling because he's separated out. Street photography very often is kind of shorter lenses and lots of depth of field capturing moments, but I think you've, you've really done just the right thing here. Great colors, great use of color. Um, it's got a bit of impact and it needs to have because this sort of shot is one of those shots that needs impact. Um, I see there's a few conversations about what I just said about blue, Kevin. Not sure what movie that would be. I guess you're talking about the teal. Teal is uh, it's, it's a bluey color, it's a hint, which is done in color grading, and it's put into shadows. Very often in movies, it, it's something which you, you, you don't notice. It's very, very subtle, but it makes the main subjects within the shot stand out by putting this slightly blue tint called teal into the shadow areas and darker areas of a shot. It makes parts of the shot slightly monochromatic blue and then the subject matter pop out. Google teal and movies and you'll probably find all sorts of tutorials on how to create it. Great shot Matt, I really really like it and I so feel for how isolated that guy must be. What's the time? I need to get my skates on, don't I? And oh, we're nearly there. An isolated rock, a very classical landscape but it is beautifully well done. Um, I love those clouds, the light, the mistiness in the background and that rock in the foreground. It's, um, yeah, it's very classic but nicely done landscape, Stephen. And I kind of like the fact that the background is a little bit hazy. 
we see a lot of focus stacking these days and there is a place for it i'm not saying it's wrong or bad or wicked but we do see a lot of focus stacking you know where, where we get you get really really close have a rock like this close up and look down at it with the camera and then focus stack away from it to get everything sharp there is a place for it i'm not saying it's wrong or bad but i also kind of like this slightly older look, this sort of fuzziness. And I think because there's all that haze and cloud and mist going on in the mountains in the background, it kind of works to have just the rock sharp and letting it fade off into the distance. Great light again. Light is king. Light is everything. You can get away with a less well composed picture of a less exciting subject if you've got really great powerful light that's appropriate for it. I just said powerful, that's the wrong word. If you've got great light that's appropriate for the subject, you can get away with all sorts of things and the picture will be eye-catching. Light is king, learn to look at light. Um, and again, look at the light here. The shadow is coming towards us. This really has been a backlighting workshop really, hasn't it? Beautiful shot, nicely done. I'm gonna stop waffling and get a move on because I have to be out of here so that the next challenge email goes out. Otherwise, if I don't hit the button in time, it won't happen. Ken, I love this idea of yours. I like those lines. It's very strong. It's kind of powerful. Um, with the bridge, your angle there, and just capturing the top of the FedEx truck, to me, there's a story in it again. You know, everybody's relying on couriers and FedEx and all the rest of it, and they have been for over a year now, everywhere. The, the, the light and shade, the power. Look at this light. This is a very different light to the last one, to, the, to several of the last ones. Now we've got hard, strong sunlight. Bang, it's crashing into things, and it's causing those hard edge, angular shadows. But it's a hard edge, angular shot, and that light is appropriate for this sort of thing. Whereas it wouldn't be appropriate here or here. It would probably detract from the subject, I think, in any of these shots. But in this shot, that hard, powerful, direct light absolutely works. I think it's a great shot. I really, really like it, Ken. Great feeling of it's the isolation. It's you've isolated the truck, yes, but you've also kind of bringing a little bit of story to it. <laughs> one of our resident regulars you bring so much creativity and work to your stuff Tori um, you do and you know you've done a great once again you've done a great if you like psychological self-portrait of maybe your feelings of isolation of you know throughout the lockdown thing and, and you know I know in your business it's probably Pretty difficult, certainly has been. Um, yes, Joss, indeed. Um, you know, and Tori, you're another one. Many of you tonight, many of you, I don't want to single people out, but again, you know, Tori, your style is incredibly recognizable and it's very good. You're very, very good at it. Again, so my challenge is see if you can come up with something that we go, oh, that's a Tori, is it? But it's such, such good fun, beautifully executed as we would expect. Um, yeah, great shot. Here's a little example of kind of the sort of thing that I'm on about because this photographer is a, a regular in the group and he's got a very defined style. And when I looked at this, I thought, oh, that's intriguing. I'm interested by that. And then I was very surprised by who took it. So it's our mate, Mel Port. Um, you know, this isn't a Mel picture really is it you know we see what do we see with Mel we see a lot of abandoned buildings we see a lot of landscapes really nicely done landscapes we see quite strong powerful colors and light and all this sort of stuff um, so you know in a way Mel you kind of preempted what I was going to say to you guys who post a lot of stuff who are quite recognizable um, I think this is eerie it's kind of odd it's kind of creepy I kind of get your isolation thing it's a bit like, you know, the, the plastic head looking out the window, isn't it? It's, it's odd. It's creepy. It's great. I like the way, again, you've kind of got water running back down. You've got a bit of wave coming in, slightly slow shutter speed to make it sort of move about a bit. The light is, again, is coming in from the side, but it's also slightly behind that crystal head. Where did you get that from? I don't know if you're here, Mel. Um, 
but again it's it's just it's intriguing it's interesting i don't know about you but it makes me sort of go that's kind of fun i kind of like that but what really interests me sue owen said the prisoner yeah I, I get that now you've said it i didn't before but yeah so this is all part of that challenge for you guys who are really good who whose styles we recognize see if you can fool us i love this one i thought this was such an interesting take on isolate and it works taylor taylor milbrand i think it's um i love the soft pastelness of it i don't know if you put a filter on there or whether that's some kind of lens effect um was it taken on a phone? I don't know, might be. I don't care what it was taken on. But I love those little bits of lens flare, which is what makes me think possibly that vignetting is something to do with light and some sort of, something weird's going on in the lens. Um, but I think it's great. I think it's great fun. I think it's a great picture. It, it is isolated. Just that little stall in the fireplace and the door and the tumble down house. But the f weird thing is, it's tidy that is to me what makes it weird what makes it feel possibly even more lonely than when you get an abandoned building and there's old tins of paint or, or pots and pans and tables and chairs like the people have left that is kind of um kind of different but this place is tidy and that you know there's no there's no rubbish it's been swept and i think it's really really isolated and lonely there is something about it which gets to me i think it's a beautifully done picture well spotted portrait from kevin um and i think it's a well done portrait again it's simple i kind of like it i get i don't know if this is a, a self-portrait um but i kind of like it and i like the fact it's a gentle sort of black and white it's not a really hard punchy contrasty one and I get how you've kind of sort of done a feeling of isolation, like the way you've chosen the position that you're in on the table. You, you it looks to me like you've chosen that with care. Um, and you've got that, that line, that hard poof, coming back. I'd love to know whether or not that is um, a self-portrait. But it's a beautifully done shot. I just got it. I think you've got a feeling, the isolation feeling coming across very well indeed. Um, Jane Kilbride. I like this one. There's just something about it. Again, it's like, it's not isolated because there's two, but they are isolated in, in the fact they're kind of in, in their own little world together. And there's something about that I rather like. Again, the YouTube rendition of that isn't great. When I look at it on my screen, the colors are nicer and there's a little bit more definition in their body shapes against the light behind. Go have a look at it in, in the album. Um, I think it is a great shot. Again, look how you've, you've moved around. You've been careful positioning the sun right behind them. Yeah, I kind of liked it. It caught my attention. This one caught my attention too. Forgive me going fast, but I know I need to get to the end quick because I'm over time. Donald Todd, again, using the light path. We've seen a few of these, haven't we? These shots that work. Notice how much we're talking about light. You know, as I said at the beginning, this time I wanted to talk just more about photos in general rather than sort of what we normally do. Pictures that work <clears throat> and why. See how the light, that light path. Now, we've all got our own light path. Light paths are magical things because we all have our own. If you move to the right, the light path comes with you. The sun moves in the sky and the light path comes with you over there. You can move light paths around on the water anywhere you want. And then by combining that with a, with a little moment, the decisive moment, you see where the paddle is. If the paddle had been in the water, I don't think it would have worked as well. But the fact the paddle is up, just as it's about to go in, or maybe it's just come out, I don't know. But by positioning Donald by positioning himself in the right place it's just kind of made it work really really nicely great light great shot I like it what do we got going on here oh yeah this I thought was intriguing and fun Sharon I always get confused because I don't think you are Sharon are you 
I can't remember if you're here. But that, to me, is really lonely, really isolated. <laughs> it's just a supermarket trolley. But I totally get that isolation. But look where it is. One it is in a parking bay, but also it's right underneath a light. Light, 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 light. If that trolley was purely in a shadow area, it's on the edge, isn't it? It's just sort of hitting the edge of a light, but there's a light above it, it's lighting up. If the trolley was in a darker area, it wouldn't stand out, it would be lost, it, it probably wouldn't work. But it's very, very simple. And it's like, boom, we just look, shopping trolley. <laughs> lost, abandoned, isolated in a car park. To me, it's a very, very lonely picture. I think it's quite good fun. The other thing I just want to point out here is, look to the right of the shop. You see we've got a bit of concrete pillar on the right. Watch what happens when it disappears. The shot goes flat, doesn't it? It's just that sometimes just having a little bit of something, somehow we're, we're kind of excluded and we're looking into the car park at a lost and lonely trolley. How can you get emotional over a trolley? I must be nuts. But you can. But once you lose that bit of concrete on the right, it's, it's somehow lost something. It's still, it's still a good shot, it's intriguing, but I just feel it works better with that little bit of concrete going on in there. So, here we go. These are the ones that I had to totally agonize over because I, I did really love them. And uh, as usual, I'll probably, you know what I'm like, I always choose things people don't expect, but I love this. I thought this is such a cracking piece of isolation. It, it is, it's, it's rare, it's an odd thing to see. But again, lovely light. And I like all, there's so many things happening all at once and it's so subtle. Really like it, Tracy. I, I don't know where it is, I don't know what, but again, it's like finding that place. Yes, that is one thing. Why is this tree so isolated? Look at the species of trees around. It's, it's, in a, it's in a pine plantation. They've got all those straight lines going on all around it. And then suddenly there's this one poor, lonely tree that has somehow grown up in this gap. And it looks like it's struggling. And it probably would be struggling because, you know, these pines kind of, they're not, they don't do a great job for the soil. Hey, Tracy, on the Isle of Wight. Mm, I like the Isle of Wight. I haven't been over the Isle of Wight for ages and I'm only just across the water. But again, right, so we, we, we've got the tree. Now, this lonely tree, which is struggling to survive in that kind of dead soil which these pines sort of produce, and the juxtaposition between the natural wiggly, curvy shapes and the equally natural, it has to be said, straight lines of the pines, that's another thing. But look at the light. Again, look at the light. Look how the highlights and shade how they're catching the wiggly tree in the middle. They are, that is what's making it pop. You don't need a bright blue sky or any of that stuff. In fact, the bright blue sky probably wouldn't work. It would detract. But the light is what is making it work. So, you know, Tracy has gone to this place in just the right light and, you know, got this great juxtaposition of this one little tree isolated, hemmed in by all the others. But look at the light. Light is king. Finding the right light. If it was a totally, totally flat light day, I'm not sure it would work so well. If there was strong sunshine, you know, and shadows going all over the place, it might. I don't know. You have to go and try. But to me, the fact the light is so different on that one tree to the others, it's absolutely cracking. Keeping the pines at distance, says Lee. Yeah, I think I'd agree with you. Lovely soft pastel colours too. Beautifully done. I thought this was just great fun too. I love that, that high speed road with no one on it apart from three little figures. Those three lonely little figures with that strong diagonal fast moving road whizzing past them with nobody there. That's a very isolating feeling, isn't it? It's a very isolated thing. Again, let's look at light. It seems to be we're looking at light. Look at light. Look at the length of those shadows. It's gorgeous. Those long, long shadows and just those, you know, arms in the air. 
the shapes that are going on here. Again, we were talking earlier about you know little tiny human figures going on. Don't be afraid of a little tiny human figure because we, we, we look at them. We perceive each other as dangerous, which we are very often um, or can be. Yeah, let's put it that way. But I love it. I just really, really like it. That is a very isolating feeling. Lockdown, big main road, not a soul on it, nothing going on. You can see from the, the marks on the road where vehicles turn in there. It looks like trucks and lorries or something come in. What did Benno just say? I've just seen Benno's popped up. We see the world with a pair of eyes, allowing us to sense depth, but photos are a 2D representation of a 3D world. Skilled photographers are able to convey the sense of depth with tricks invented by dot, dot, dot. Benno's a good guy to listen to. We're going to get you, we'll, we'll get you back, mate, because, you know, he talks all sorts of interesting things, and he's a lot of fun. So, yeah, it is. Very true. It's a 2D representation of a 3D world. I'm finding ways to do that. Invented by, here we go, sense of depth with tricks. Invented by classical painters by placing a foreground object in the corner of the image. Hmm. Dark elements close to the camera, brighter ones in the centre. Which is, of course, what we've got going on here, isn't it? We've got those dark elements going on around the edge. Benno, quick question. Do you like this? It's just interesting. You know, we've got Benno here. Let's use him. <laughs> You know, I'm the scarper pretty quick. <clears throat> you immediately see depth. Yes or no would do, my friend. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. But you do. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of distance. And the whole point of the exercise is, of course, that to be lonely. And the shadows help with that. And I was really intrigued. I didn't know about the old painter's technique about, you know, dark stuff in the corners. <clears throat> I'm going to have to move on to the next one, which I thought, whether this is posed or not, I just think it's, it's, it's well done. And, you know, about losing yourself or people losing themselves in a bottle and, and the feelings of isolation that, that an alcoholic has. One of my oldest friends sadly disappeared into a bottle and he became unrecognizable to the lovely guy that I once knew and it's very very sad indeed um, but whether you stage this if you did stage it you staged it very well if this was something that you saw and snuck up on whether the guy's drunk or not doesn't matter the story you have told is what it is but whether you snuck up on them and took a picture Either way, I think it really works. And again, the light is really great. Look at the use of light and shade. A lot of light. There is light coming from behind. Again, look at it wrapping around the guy's shoulder. The text is on the hand holding the glass. There's lots of light and shade going on. And the light is what is bringing it up. So we, we, we notice this guy. We get the hand and the glass totally. I just think it is really well done, Dina. Are you here, Dina? Sorry, I should have been looking. Um, it's Dina's husband and it's staged. Cool, you've obviously had a chat about it. Either way, Dina, I just think, I just think it's, it's, it's another interpretation, another twist on isolate, isn't it? It really is. I think it's a beautifully taken shot. Forgive me, I have to move on. And I thought this was very intriguing. Um, Anton... I really think this is a really intriguing picture. The depth, the distance, but that little tiny plane. So well captured at that moment in that place, isolated up there in the sky. It's probably, I don't know if it's like the human shape, the, the airplane shape, but to me, you couldn't miss it. Even though it's tiny, it's occupying such a small amount of real estate in the frame. It just got me and it's like, Boom, look at that, that little plane. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Somebody just wrote, Sue Owen, brutalist concrete. Yeah, absolutely. The concrete is brutal, very brutal. And the sky is just beautiful. The haziness, the softness of the light. I think it's a very well captured, very well executed picture. 
very well executed image Anton I really really love it and I really like this one too totally different light very very mysterious very mysterious and it's kind of possibly exploring you know the human feelings of isolation um, very very soft very very gentle light I think it's really interesting Mary Mari forgive me but I do like the softness of the light but again it's all about light look the light is coming towards the camera it's just touching just caressing um, this woman's face is it you Murray have you done a self-portrait here is it someone you know I don't know but it's very dark and mysterious you don't need tons going on in a picture necessarily um, but look at that light it's the light that is telling the story more than anything else it's a soft it's a gentle picture it's very different I just think it's great Mari, experimental and out of my comfort zone. Well, there you go, you're a runner-up, Mari. Get out your comfort zone more often. Everybody get out your comfort zone more often. The more outside your comfort zone you are, the better. All the best things happen in scary land. I think it's a great shot, Mari, and I love it. It's your use of light, that, that subtle, delicate use of light. You don't need much. There's just some little hints going on in that picture, and that's all. And it tells a little story. Our theme was isolate. You have created isolation within that picture beautifully done which brings me on to something which <laughs> I chose as my overall favorite you know what I just think it's great fun I really do and it just gives me a feeling of being lost and alone on a strange railway platform in the middle of the night I just think it's <laughs> it's so simple again light look at the light so sorry I didn't say anything this is Arash I just think it's um, great fun I really do I just think it, it, it's captured something you could be that person on that platform late at night you know waiting for your train look at the light just glinting off the rails but also look at those little pools of light going on all the way back but it's just the way there's just a hint of light it's just caressing that hand it's just caressing that hand. Um, sorry, I can see there's a bit of a brouhaha going on. What's the brouhaha? What's the brouhaha? Is it something to do with here? Let's have a look. I don't know. I'm not getting what you're on about. No. Purely isolate. Sorry, I'm not getting the face connotation. Sorry, I'm not very good at reading, as I have said. Anyway, I'm going to go back to what I was talking about. Um, I think it's a great shot, Arash. Congratulations. I chose you to be our isolate winner. Where did I put PLD face? I'm sorry, I'm lost, guys. I'm really lost. I will ask Emma what it is that I've done wrong, but I wouldn't be at all surprised. Where did I put PLD face? Anyway. <laughs> oh, right, on the wirecast, did I? Okay, yeah, I've seen it now. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. We know who the winner is. We've looked at all the pictures, and it has been great fun going through this evening shots with you. It is five to nine. I have to get my skates on big time styly because I got to get some stuff done ready for the next one to go out I have to confess the next challenge video is not not great <laughs> uh, a lot of these are being done in a hurry I'm, I'm trying to explore some different ways of doing this because as you know PLD survives on donations to cover the costs and uh, they're not being covered so I am exploring some ideas, some, some ways we might be able to, to help with that. But for the meantime, I just I have to reduce some of my time input into this. Big thank you to everybody who does donate, who supports this group, um, who helps to pay some of the costs for Joe's wages. My, well, I don't get any wages at the moment. It's been a bit of a tough year. But yeah, Joe's wages, Emma's wages, the costs of doing these things. But yeah, I don't want it to die because I just don't. Anyway, 
It's been a pleasure talking to you all. Benno, thank you for joining us. It was really cool. I'll give you a shout. Maybe tomorrow if you're around. I'll try you tomorrow. Uh, it'd be good to catch up with you, my friend. I was talking to Simon Newton this afternoon. Be well. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. And this time I'm going to remember to switch off the live broadcast because I didn't, did I? I left it running if I can find it. There it is. I pressed the wrong button. Good night, folks. Take care. <laughs>